Hi everyone and welcome to it. This is rayeza.co.za tutorial on the following assignment question, our Christmas reunion. Thank you so much again for joining us. My name is Tsegedi Munyamore, one of the tutors right here. And I'm basically going to be um, elaborating a bit more on Lefrohonolo Ntodi's um, assignment uh, sort of analysis, critical analysis of the assignment question, our Christmas reunion. Thank you so much once more, as I said, for joining us. Let's start by summarizing the entire story. Um, our Christmas reunion is basically about two brothers. Uh, the one brother is Selby and the other one is Tawanda. Tawanda is now the smaller one, I believe, and Selby is the elder one. So these brothers grew up in rural Zimbabwe, uh, where they went to school together in a village and uh, Tawanda, the very small one, actually loved his brother Selby a whole lot. Now, he admired him so much, he revered him and thought of him as a hero. He loved him so much that he thought that I could actually go to his classes and sit there and everything like that. There was a strong bond between these two brothers. Um, eventually, life happened, they grew up and everything, and Selby went on to London. Selby going on to London, Tawanda stayed in a village in Zimbabwe with his parents, with uh, the family and everybody else, going to school and everything. But um, before Tawanda actually went on, Selby, excuse me, Selby the old one, actually went on to London, this is what happened. Um, a very integral part of the story. The boys were there, Selby, the older boys. Now Tawanda, the younger one, is the narrator, obviously, of the story. So Selby was sitting there with a few boys at the playground and they were discussing and sort of analyzing what this rubbery thing is as the narrator places it but we all know that it was actually in fact a condom and one of the elder boys was actually showing selby and all the other boys how it works using a stick and the nun because this was a convent school came in and basically shouted and just screamed at them and just told them hey boys what are you doing with that what do you think this is you know um instead of sitting them down and explaining the birds and the bees to them by the birds and the bees i mean the sexual identity sexual issue the nun didn't do that but in effect she acted adversely and shouted and screamed at them and made them uh, not really want to explore that sort of chapter anymore cutting long story short um tawanda in london then excuse me selby in london then comes back to Zimbabwe. Before he comes back, he gives the family some money to go buy a goat and tells the younger brother, Tawanda, to actually go out and slaughter the goat for his arrival. While Tawanda is busy slaughtering and skinning the goat, he hears the bus coming along and bam, he decides, you know what, I actually need to go and meet my brother at the bus stop, Selby. He's excited, the whole family's excited, but he goes, meets him, and before he meets him, he sees, this is what the author does. The author actually builds suspense through his writing, you know, by saying that there's one person who comes off the bus, another person comes off the bus, and yet another person comes off the bus. But Selby does not see, is not seen there, excuse me. I mix the names around, excuse me. Uh, but uh, the older brother Selby is not seen at all by Tawanda. He's getting nervous and anxious to find out where is my brother. I mean, he gave us money for the goat, but he's not here. That's how uh, a reader, uh, a writer, excuse me, happens or can actually build suspense and anxiety within the reader, you know. Um, eventually, before the bus is about to leave, a lady says, hey, wait, there's someone else in there. And lo and behold, it's actually Selby, the older brother. Tawanda, looking at this person, sees a familiar, a familiar reality there. Excuse me, it's a tongue twister. He sees a familiar person, rather. And he thinks, perhaps this is my brother, but wait. Why is this person so skinny? Why is his skin darker than normal? Why do they look like they're frailing so much? Aha! Uh -huh. And it is actually Selby, sadly. But Selby is not the way that he left Zimbabwe. He's ailing, he's frail, and he even struggles to go down the steps of the bus. Upon getting home, arriving at home, um, Tawanda finds that the goat that he was actually slaughtering is now in pieces. The, the, the dogs have, 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 have eaten it because before he left, he managed to cover it up and make sure that nobody, no flies, no pestilences or dogs actually come and disturb what he was doing there. But 
unfortunately he finds that in Setswana we say everything is in haywire everything is just messed up and that goat is not even able to be eaten uh, by the family any longer upon seeing her son the mother to Selby actually just decides to run off and go to the riverbank to try and get some form of muti or some form of muriana or some form of medicine to help the son out now the younger boy tawanda he's a bit shocked sure he's older but this is the first time he's seen his brother in such a light he's always revered his brother he's always seen his brother as this shining hero and this young man who can do anything and everything he had so much faith so much hope in his brother you know but to see his brother not being able to walk not being able to even consume anything to eat lying on the bed helpless was i can imagine heartbreaking for him so it happens that his uncle their uncle tells the young man tawanda hey look there's an illness called hiv and aids and unfortunately your brother has contracted it and eventually selby himself calls tawanda to the bed I'm not sure how he would call him. Tawanda! 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 I'm playing. But you'll remember that, I'm sure, when you're writing your assignment and everything, you know. Calls him to the bed and eventually just, you know, his, he takes his last breath as he says his brother's name, Tawanda. And he passed away and the uncle confirms that I think your brother's passed away as well. Uh, cutting a long story short, the mother of, as well, of the two brothers ends up not being found. He's lost now within our analysis this was one of the things that one of the things that we couldn't understand as to why does the mother get lost perhaps in the comments down below you can actually just give us a few more answers as to why does the mother not return home what happens to the mother and what is the significance of the mother's disappearance in the whole story let's get to the crux of the matter now as students you've got assignment questions regarding this piece of literature Let's try to tackle them together. What I'm going to do, uh, what we do actually here at Raize, is not to give you the answers as you know, because that would be spoon feeding and you wouldn't get any knowledge, which then means you wouldn't know what to do after you graduate eventually, you know. So let's try and facilitate and understand how to answer these questions. Let's, let's, let's do that. All right. The first question on page 84. Of the short story, a nun discovers a group of boys playing with a condom. Mm -hmm. Like I I hope you're using them. What do her diction and tone tell us about her attitude towards sex? He said sex. Your answer should identify specific words and phrases from the text and explain how they convey this attitude. Now, let's try and break down the question before you are able to actually answer this question. I've got a few notes here. If you can just be patient with me. Let's break it down. Question one. They speak to us about diction. Now, what does diction mean? Diction. Diction is the nun's voice or words or phrases that she actually uses to address the young boys. Her tone. What do they mean by her tone? The way in which she says these words. Stop that. What do you boys think you're doing? Now, that's the diction and the tone. Now, we want to know what is the actual question here. Your answer should identify specific words. Yes, we have done that. But now, her, the question is, tell us about her attitude towards sex based on the diction, the words she used, and her tone, the way in which she's saying the words she's used. What's attitude? Attitude is one's perception, the way I see things, the way nibona yolenda, the way kibona ntaba e ya sex. What's the nun's attitude towards that, uh, towards sex? You tell us. You can you can actually easily write down the comments here, uh, on the comments. Let us know what your thoughts are. Remember, we're not going to give you the answers, but that's really breaking down the question. I'll give you a hint, perhaps an example. Her attitude to could be one of uh, being very non-liberal, being very conservative about sex, which also feeds into the African culture of having sex being a taboo. I mean, have you ever tried to speak with your parents about the birds and the bees? Have you ever tried to speak with your parents about sex? I'm waiting. 
is difficult, right? Exactly. So that should give you a clue as to how to answer this question. What is the nun's attitude towards sex? She's elderly, obviously. Think about your parents, think about the elderly African people and how they would perceive sex. Good luck with that one. The second question. Now, the relationship between the narrator and his brother is central. Central, it's important to the story's overall meaning. Write a paragraph which you discuss how each sibling is characterized and show how the relationship, this relationship, contributes to the overall meaning, the overall story, the overall prevalent theme of the story. How do we? Let's, let's try to break down the question now. Now, their relationship, they are talking about their relationship. By relationship, how do they relate to one another? Think about a sibling, a friend. How do you relate to that friend? How do you see that friend? Here we go. The theme, one of the themes is that a younger brother admires this older brother. This sort of sees him as a hero, if I may say. Think about, think about your questions critically. How do they relate to one another? How do you relate to your parent? You know, how do you relate to a younger brother, to an older brother as well? And how does it add to the whole story of these two young men and this one being lost to HIV and AIDS? For instance, the, the, the writer does this deliberately. He, he makes sure that these, as the readers, we see the relationship. We, we, we see that this one used to go to this one's class all the time. We see that this one was so happy to see this one that, you know, he left the goat there and decided, ah, I'm going to meet my brother no matter what. He builds, the author, he builds this relationship, this bond, by using words and examples of how they used to relate to one another, which is what you need to break as to how did they relate to one another. This adds to the eventual death of the older brother. If they were not that close, the death of the older brother would not evoke such sad emotions within the reader. But the writer makes sure that through the story you see how close they are, how connected they are, how much this younger one actually loves the hero brother. But now for this hero brother to be gunned down, shot down, by a disease that he doesn't even know of. He's shocked to see his brother in such a light. Good luck with that one too. Yeah. The third question. The title of the story is deeply ironic. Explain the irony and account for how uh, the author uses um, the literary devices of uh, furthest uh, his argument to further his argument, excuse me, and how the author furthers his argument that sex education is important within the African landscape or within the African context. Now, let's break it down. What does irony actually mean? Hmm? Reading it, a technique used by writers, such in this case, to portray a particular situation, but the reality is obviously opposite. Now, the title, what's the title of this piece? Our Christmas Reunion. Now, you answer yourself, was there an actual reunion here? That's something that could hit, lead you towards um, answering this question as analytically and as, um, as broad as you can. Now, the second part of it is... Uh, uh, he uses this uh, literary device for this, uh, his argument that sex education is important. For instance, um, the irony here, like I said, is the name of the, uh, the title might not necessarily be what's happening there and everything, you know. But now the author wants to argue that sex education is actually important here. We see this again. For instance, going back to the second question, when the nun acts um, crazy and wants the boys to stop what they're doing and everything like that, had the nun actually sat down and said, guys, I see you're interested in this. Let's try and get maybe a man to come in and speak with you about it, you know? So, the fourth question. The goat purchased on behalf of Selby, the older brother, the narrator's brother, functions as a symbol in the story as well. Write a paragraph in which you trace how the symbolic meaning of the global changes over the course of the plot in relation to author's criticism of prudish attitudes towards sex. 
Now, like I said, the Shogun Olo Ntodi actually broke this down as well. And uh, what I'm going to do for us all is simply just read what she says. Okay. Be patient with me. Okay, okay, okay. It's question number four. This is what she, this is what Lechonola actually says. The goat purchased on behalf of Selby is symbolic of the bounty of life which the narrator's family was now experiencing. The rarity of meat eaten in the family is equated to the rarity of seeing Selby, since this would be the first Christmas they would actually be spending with him since he had been in London. The skinning of the goat by the narrator could be a metaphoric of how much Selby had shed of himself. This is illustrated by the paragraph Im immediately before um, that of Skinny, in which the narrator no longer recognizes his brother after he comes out of the bus, obviously. This can be equated to the layers with which Selby was recognized had been skinned by London and Harare life. Furthermore, a Wolf of Wall Street trajectory can be uh, drawn from, uh, the, from the goat analogy in that Selby went to London and Harare as an innocent goat, in inverted commas, who was skinned by life in the city and the expectations which come from it. The dogs which eat the goat can be compared to how much living in the city can take away from someone and how the disease, a disease such as HIV and AIDS can easily eat away at somebody. Finally, the dog-riddled goat emphasized the lack of recognition of Selby. Now, uh, when I was discussing, when we were discussing this with the team, it's very important for you when you analyze these questions to, especially rather when you read and analyze these questions, to initially read with emotion, uh, tie yourself into the story, um, as you would see in soapies, how women would hate the villain, like, hey, we're taking Stephanie Romero one day now, we're taking. That should be the way you read this as well. Look at the way that the author plays with words. Look at the way that he puts words together. They evoke emotion, you know. Uh, he deliberately puts the goat there just before Selby comes in to sort of show, um, you know, the goat represents Selby as uh the lady the lady who's our tutor actually suggests as well so i'd like for you to find find whatever emotion feel and ask yourself what emotions do i feel from the story how, how do i feel how does the story make me feel and and it it, it, should, it might not make you sad throughout maybe at the beginning you were happy seeing these brothers they reminded you of a relationship that you have with a sibling and then eventually it makes you sad or whatever let me not put words in your mind but rather think about it critically be emotive about this understand that the author is trying to poke at your emotions Ladies and gents, I'm sure the team here at Raietzi, um and myself, we've put together a lot of information for you to actually complete and analyze critically these assignment questions. The fifth and last question to our assignment, which is our Christmas reunion. What do you think is the main theme of our Christmas reunion? Write a paragraph, paragraph in which you account for your decision by identifying and explaining the significance of the conflict in the story. Let's break down the question. Remember, remember, remember to always break down the question before you answer it. This will give you an in-depth analysis of the question. Don't rush. Let's break it down. Theme. Now, we believe that this story has several sub-themes. However, one main prevalent theme. Okay. In a little bit of a there's one big story, one big theme that I believe that the author would like for us to all understand. Now, HIV and AIDS and how it affects individuals and communities within the African context. This is, I believe, the prevalent theme, the, the umbrella theme. This is why perhaps the author said, I want to write a story that speaks towards this so that it can educate people and try to promote sex education within schools, within communities, within families. The second theme, sub-theme, could be, look, 
maybe uh, looking at communities and having them talk about sex, having them talk about sexuality, especially, especially a uh, communication pattern of from top to bottom. By that I mean from elderly to young people. Sex is still a taboo in Africa. Uh, like I said in the beginning, try to ask your parents to speak about sex or try to ask them what their thoughts about sex, uh, sexuality is, you know. Maybe then um, in the comments, please write down what you think some of the sub sub themes could actually be remember ladies and gentlemen knowledge is never or rather um, uh, studying at your university studying your courses it's not about getting your certificate but you must find an interest in them you know this is not high school anymore this is tertiary where you want to be trained to do something with this knowledge so do think about it critically at any point remember you can always ask us questions we really hope that this video helped you out a lot. My name is Tekiri Munyomore, part of the Raizi.co.za team, Raizi app team, and Raizi Go get your learner. Go get your learner.